In his annual message to Congress, delivered on December 1st, 1862, exactly one month before his Emancipation Proclamation, Abraham Lincoln declared, We cannot escape history. The fiery trial through which we pass will light us down in honor or dishonor to the latest generation. Lincoln's own fiery trial was far from over. The enactment of the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863 would be the turning point in the tide of the war and in the meaning of the war. Frederick Douglass had no doubt about that point. The mission of the war was the liberation of the slaves as well as the salvation of the Union. Frederick Douglass was a former slave who had purchased his freedom and started his own abolitionist newspaper. He welcomed the proclamation and its call for free blacks to join in the fight for their freedom. But he criticized Lincoln's reluctance to recruit them from the start. Once let the black man get upon his person the brass letters US. Let him get an eagle on his button and a musket on his shoulder and bullets in his pocket. And there is no power on earth which can deny that he has earned the right to citizenship in the United States. In 1863, Lincoln and Douglas met for the first time. Douglas complained to the president that black soldiers were paid $7 a month compared to $13 for white soldiers. Lincoln was sympathetic, yet he didn't hesitate to remind Douglas how many people opposed even the idea of African-American troops and that he was taking a significant political risk. But the president assured Douglas that pay inequities would be addressed over time. On the equally sensitive issue of commissioning black officers, Lincoln said he would sign any commission sent to him. And while he hesitated to engage in reprisal killings, the president agreed that the brutal treatment accorded black soldiers captured by Confederates could not go unpunished. The two men parted that day with a promise to meet again. Following their meeting, Douglas took Lincoln at his word and worked tirelessly to help recruit 180,000 black soldiers, including two of his own sons, to serve in Union armies. More than 30,000 would make the supreme sacrifice. Their valor challenged racist notions and changed the face of the war. Over the next two years, Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass would meet twice more. Their final encounter took place following Lincoln's second inauguration. When Douglass arrived at a reception at the White House that evening, he found that blacks were barred from attending. But the president instructed the guards to let him pass, calling out, here comes my friend, Douglass.